Hey y'all, this lesson is on transformations of functions and we're starting with horizontal and vertical shifts. So in my next videos, we'll get into reflections and stretching and compressing, but this one is just for horizontal and vertical. Transformation of functions can be done on any type of function. So we will be looking at a few different types, but this is basically leading into quadratic functions later on. Before we get into quadratic functions, we're going to explore the parent functions of all different types of functions. And so far, we've already seen linear. We've already seen absolute value. Whoops. Quadratic. We will see radical functions. We'll also see polynomials. Rationals exponential and logarithmic. So there's lots of different types of functions. <clears throat> and we're gonna look at the parent functions of each, or some of them, not all of them, but the parent functions. And by parent function, I just mean it's the origination. And so from the origination, we have these transformations, these shifts. A linear equation, we recognize the simplest linear equation as y equals x. And from y equals x, we can change it. We can add numbers, we can multiply numbers, divide numbers, all these different things. And the graph of y equals x goes through 0, 0, and hits the corners of the coordinate plane. These points are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and so on. And if you're unsure about the uh, what these graphs look like, you can put them in your calculator and graph them quickly. It's not necessarily the point of this lesson necessarily. I'm just showing you, briefing you on what the parent functions look like. Absolute value we've seen before. It's got those long bars with the X. It is a V shaped graph. Oops got curved like that. Mine's a little off. Needs to go one, one, two, two, three, three, but it's okay. We're just sketching. A quadratic equation is a U-shaped graph. A square root equation. It's kind of this half sideways U type of thing. A cubic equation is a polynomial, and it kind of does this weird little S thing. And then a rational equation has a variable in the denominator, and it splits up into these two separate pieces. And those are some of the parent functions that we can use to perform transformations on. There's lots more different types of parent functions, but these are kind of the ones that I feel like are the most popular or the most widely used. When the graphs of parent functions shift, it can move uh, side to side, up or down. It can reflect and it can shrink or stretch. So there's lots of different types of ways we can transform a function. In this particular video, we'll be focusing on um, horizontal and vertical shifts. So we're going to explore how these shifts happen by first looking at the graph of the parent function and then looking at the graph of a transformation on that function. And then we'll take note of what's happening. We know that the parent function of x squared, I just picked a few x values here for x squared. You can pick different values if you want to, but I just thought these would be easy to do. We're squaring each x. So this is 4, 1, 0, 1. It's going to go up symmetrically in a u shape. 1, 1, 2, 4, 1, 1, 2, negative 2. 4, 0, 0. It's kind of looks like a U because it's so small, but it's not a U. I mean, 
kind of look like a V, but it's not a V, it's a U, which mine turned out like a U, sorry. And now we're gonna do X squared plus three. So we're taking these values and we're adding three. So four plus three is seven, one plus three is four, zero plus three is three, one plus three is four. And now we have negative two goes up to seven, negative one goes to four, zero, three, one, four, and it goes up symmetrically. And again, my little dots make it look a little bit like a V, but it's actually a U. So try to make it flattened out down here. And now we have our parent function and then a transformation on the parent function. How do these two functions compare? How is this one, the second one, different than the first one? It goes up three on the y axis. And then what is the new vertex, which is the lowest point in this case, of the second fun function? Zero, three. Now we'll just kind of pin that for a second and we'll go to the next example before we draw any conclusions. In this example, we have a, another quadratic function. We already know what it looks like. It's a U-shaped graph. I'm just gonna sketch it because I'm pretty confident. Eh, it's got a little wide, but it's okay. And then in the next function, it has X plus three in parentheses squared. So we're shifting X, we're changing the X value plus three, then squaring it. Whereas back here, we were adding three to the existing squared value. Now we're gonna be adding three before we square it. So this is gonna change it a little bit. So we do X plus three, negative two plus three is one, one squared is one, negative one plus three is two, two squared is four, zero plus three is three squared is nine, one plus three, four squared is 16. Okay, um, looks like I'm only getting one half of the uh, parabola. So if I did a few extra points here, just to kind of help out finish the uh, table, that's zero, zero squared, negative one squared. Yeah, that helps. That helps me complete the picture. So basically what happened was I've got negative two, one, one, four, negative one, one, zero, nine, that's off the graph, uh, one, 16, that's off the graph. So I don't really have the full picture here. Um, and these points were going more off the graph. So I tried to pick some points over here that would help, hopefully help me get the rest of the story. At negative three, it's zero. At negative four, it's one. So we can see now it's starting to make that U shape. Now we can look at the parent function as compared to the transformed function and what happened in the second function. It moved Sorry, my laughing seems random. I locked the door, the dog tried to bust in and it's, it was loud. Uh, move left three units on the X axis. And our new vertex, our new lowest point is negative three, zero. So when we look at these two different functions, two different things happened. When the plus three was inside the parentheses, it moved horizontally. And when the plus three was outside the squared or the parentheses, it moved vertically. So depending on what this value is, is where how it's gonna move up or down, positive or negative. But if you'll notice on this one, we had plus three, but it moved left three. So that's kind of weird. We'll explore that later.
I'll show you why. In, in, I'll show you why later. Uh, when does a vertical shift happen? So the vertical shift happened when the plus C, the constant, was outside the squared value or the parent function, we could say, because that would it this would apply to any type of function, not necessarily quadratic. So we could mark that out and say parent function. And the horizontal shift was when the C value was inside the parentheses or in with the parent function kind of when the parent function was changed. Uh, you get what I mean. And we noticed that when it was plus C, it moved left. And if we had a minus C, it move, it would move right. There's a reason for this. It's not ambiguous. It's not random. And uh, like I said, we will go into that later when we look more into quadratics and the vertex form of a quadratic. When I'm doing horizontal and vertical shifts, I really like this memory device that I learned from someone else when I was student teaching, and I call it HIVO. And what it stands for is horizontal movement happens inside the parentheses and vertical movement happens outside the parentheses. So when we have, for example, y equals x plus 3 squared plus 3, I can combine the two equations that we just did, then this indicates that it's going to go up three on the y-axis and left three on the x-axis. So we would go shift it over left three and then up three. And that vertex would be negative three, three. That's pretty cool. And this will, this will see, this will, you will see this again when we do vertex form. Um, vertex form, I'll give you a spoiler, is a, a minus sign in the parent function or the original function of a, a vertex form. And so basically it's a minus a negative and that negative three. Anyway, I didn't want to spoil it for you, but I did. Um, but I, I don't want to leave you hanging there. There is a reason why it's opposite of what we think when it's inside and that just relates to vertex form which we will definitely see again very soon. That is all I have for horizontal and vertical shifts. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will be happy to help.